We have a question from Joey. I am encountering a problem with my kettlebell work. My swing has always made my back flare up. Wow. Even after multiple form checks with certified coaches. I have even dropped down to a lighter bell size and stuck with only two-handed swings, which I agree with you. I have given up on the one-handed swing for now, and I completely agree with you on that. However, I tried a couple light kettlebell snatch workouts recently when I wasn't able to make it to the gym a few times a week. I did the same weight, same number of reps in the kettlebell snatch, but without any issues in my back. Even though I've never gotten a form check for my kettlebell snatch and can tell that my form is not as solid as a two-handed swing. I was wondering if you had any insights on this or any ad advice for swinging without back injuries, issues. You know, um, Joey, I, I just think uh, there, you're doing something wrong. Well, no. Uh, there's either something wrong or you're doing something wrong. Okay, I know that's, you know. But what's interesting is that you tell us that the snatch doesn't bother you. And I'm wondering if it's because the snatch has so much more... Uh, um, you can have a crappy swing. You know, I tell people it's certs. You know, I tell the assistants, try not to look at people the first two or three, four swings because generally people are not very good in their first couple of swings. Now I'm sure there's, you know, the greatest kettlebell minds of all time are going, every kettlebell swing must be perfect. But the truth is they're not. Weirdly, though, with the snatch, um, people's technique seems to be a lot cleaner, and I'll tell you why. Because that is where the snatch finishes. And it, you should finish with the bicep on your ear. You should be vertical. The top of your head, the hair should be straight. Your butt cheeks should be clenched. Your quads should be tight and lit up. And that's the finish. <sighs> finish. Then you do the next rep. Whereas with the swing, I think this is where a lot of people get hurt, is you throw that thing as violently as you can forward. And where does it finish? Now, I think it finishes in the push-up position, plank position, uh, or what I call the vertical plank, right there. And yet, I watch people online, and they do this hyperactive arch. They bring their hands too high. They do all these things because there is no clear finish on what a swing is. You know, Joey, I'm just spitballing here because I haven't used a cliche in a few minutes. But I'm wondering if the snatch is easier on your back because of the clear start and finish uh, uh, of it. You, when I teach it, I teach you start here and I teach you finish here. So it's boom, boom, one, boom, boom, two. And I'm wondering if because the finish is clear and the pause is clear and the verticality is clear, I'm wondering if that's what keeps your back feeling good. Uh, Joey, I think you can have some really, really good progress just, you know, focusing on the snatch. Uh, I know the snatch has kind of fallen out of the favor in the last decade. It really has. Uh, I mean, it was the answer to all questions uh, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, but I still think there's great value in it. And um, I, I wouldn't want to say it's, the you know, <laughs> I've already said in this podcast that if I could only do one exercise... But man, if you were doing double kettlebell front squats and snatches, well, that's a pretty good workout. Get your snatches in and then fail. That'd be an ad workout from hell. Uh, just throwing ideas at you, Joey. Uh, I'm not qualified really to help you with back injuries, but I think you've intuitively come to a good answer here. So let's try it out. Let's, hey, if it doesn't hurt, keep doing it. Kind of the opposite of what you usually hear. Thank you.